been a while but I am back for a book haul video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about all the books that I've hauled since the beginning of the year and later in the video I might be explaining a little bit about where I've been gone. Also in the time that I've been away I've got my hair cut so yes if I look different that's why and let me just warn you there are 30 plus books here which is an average of 10 books a month that I've acquired. So yeah, this is gonna be quite like rapid fire, kind of why I picked them up, like why I wanted to read them. Just a quick disclaimer though, I haven't bought all of these books myself. Some of them have been gifts and some of them I've received from publishers. And I've actually read some of the books in this entire video. So I won't be going into too much detail on like my in-depth thoughts on those books that I've actually read because I'm planning on doing like a whole wrap up for January to March at the end of this month. I've split the books all up into different categories. These first books I bought because I had lots of credit on my Waterstones loyalty card after Christmas so I decided to do a little haul at the beginning of January. So yeah let's get into the first set of books. The first book is Idle Burning by Rin Usami and the first book on this list I have read. I read it right at the beginning of the year. I'm pretty sure I started it the day that I bought it and I think this was the first book that I read in 2023. This is about a teenage girl living in Japan and she is obsessed with this idol, this boy in a boy band. It's about obsession and the online world. I actually related to this quite a lot because when I was a teenager I wasn't having the best time at school and I made a fan account for Dylan O'Brien and honestly the community that I met like the friends I met through that and like my love of Teen Wolf really reminded me of this book so I completely related to the main character and her loneliness and why she kind of got obsessed to the degree that she did. But yeah this was just a very interesting translated novella. I actually really enjoyed it. It had really sweet illustrations in it at the beginning of some chapters as well. So yeah I definitely recommend this one if you're interested in that kind of topic. The next book that I got as part of that haul which I actually have talked about right at the beginning of this year is The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bolgakov. This is my second copy or edition of this book specifically. I picked up one when I was in Berlin which was the red and white one that you guys might know but this is one that I've wanted to get for quite a while. It's the Penguin Deluxe Classic Edition and it might actually be my favourite of those. Yeah, it's really really beautiful. I just wanted to own this one even though I haven't read it yet but it is on my 2023 TBR. So changing it up a little bit I actually got a non-fiction as part of the haul and this is kind of classed in the realm of spirituality and self-help and that is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. As you can see somebody's reading it, it's not me, it's Jamshed and apparently he's on chapter three already and he's been tabbing. He has literally become obsessed with reading in the last few months and he started tabbing and annotating. I don't know if he's annotated this one yet. We've both read a little bit of it and we're not entirely sure if it's for us but essentially this author like decades ago had this spiritual awakening and he's just kind of sharing his thoughts on life and kind of living in the present moment with us within this book. It says on the back that in the last 20 years it's continued to be embraced by millions of readers around the world so this is incredibly popular you probably heard of it. On that day I also picked up a bunch of manga so these are the three that I chose just as continuations of the series that I've already started so I got volumes two and three in Jujutsu Kaisen which I really enjoyed I started watching the show as well and I got volume five in Demon Slayer I'm currently reading volume four right now so yeah I think I'm gonna read a bit more of that before continuing in that specific anime they are super popular for a reason so yes I'm really excited to keep continuing on in both of these series. The next book is 13 Ways of Looking at Fat Girl by Mona Award and I believe this was her first book that she published and I kind of just wanted to read all of them before her next book came out which is Rouge and that's coming out around September October I'm not sure about the UK that is the US release. I decided that I wanted to finish her backlist first so I picked this up because it came into the bookshop. This is the new cover of it I believe but it had a blue cover before. Honestly yellow books I've got some there have become a massive trend in publishing recently. This is incredibly bright um so yeah I'm not actually sure on these colours but yeah I'm also not sure about the book itself I don't know much about it. Honestly I just picked it up because it's Mona Award and I love her writing so yeah I guess we'll find out my thoughts later on in the year. And the last book in that little haul in January is The Other Black Girl by Zakiya Delilah Harris. This is a book that I've put on so many TV throughout the last couple of months and just haven't picked up. I attempted to read it during a 24 hour readathon that I did back in February but I just didn't get around to it because it was one of the bigger books and I ended up reading a bunch of smaller ones so yes this one has kind of suffered on my shelf in silence and it is one of the most intriguing books in my physical TBR now just because it's a thriller set at a publishing house in New York which sounds absolutely amazing. The next few books I picked up on a book shopping day with Yasmin one of my close friends in central London. We went to Waterstones, Piccadilly and Hatchards as well and yeah we had such a good day. I didn't plan on buying any books but I saw these ones that 
basically haven't been at my local bookstore so I decided to pick them up as soon as I saw them and like took advantage of the fact that they were there even though I was on kind of a book buying ban at the time which obviously failed but yes these next four books that I'm going to talk about are the ones that I got that day the first one is a short story collection by Ling Ma and that is Bliss Montage you might recognize the name Ling Ma from Severance which I believe is their most popular book I'm pretty sure it's a novel set in an office and I think she's quite darkly funny so yeah I saw this and the cover intrigued me immediately I think it's amazing and it's just a collection of very weird short stories kind of about very mundane situations though and I've read probably nearly half of the story so far I'm currently on the story called returning and just to give you an idea of how weird this book got there is a whole story called yeti lovemaking which was as weird as it sounds so yes I just haven't continued reading this one because I think I got kind of bored of the story that I was reading at the time but I definitely want to pick it up I have a plan over the next couple of weeks to kind of finish off what I'm currently reading or my currently reading list on Goodreads which is quite extensive yeah I just haven't really been good at finishing books lately but I feel like that's not new I feel like I've always been like that Gunk Baby by Jamie Marina Lau is the next book on this list I think this one's set in Australia I'm pretty sure it was on the Australasia table at Piccadilly which I don't really read that many books set in Australia or New Zealand so I'm really excited to be reading this one and this is essentially a novel about consumerism it is a massive commentary on that and it is set at a shopping mall in Australia this is kind of an ironic topic to be bringing up during a book haul video like this is literally consumerism at its finest but yeah maybe I'll learn a thing or two after reading this the next one is everything you ever wanted by Louisa Salma and this is a sci-fi book which is something that I don't read too often essentially humans on earth get the choice to move to a different planet to leave earth behind the only captures you can never return back to earth once you've made that decision and then i don't think it's as nice as they make it sound yeah i'm kind of terrified because this could definitely set me off on a spiral i've been thinking about all kinds of things lately to do with global warming and the state of our earth and like whether I want children or not so yeah I feel like this book is one to read when I'm feeling a bit more stable mentally the last book that I got on that day with Yasmin is Void Parts by Eliza Clark it's been described as like the female version of American Psycho and I feel like that just says it all it's about a photographer I believe living in oh I was gonna say Scotland but it's Newcastle she takes very odd photos of young men so yeah apparently this is like really disgusting and disturbed but I'm kind of excited I do really enjoy those books for some reason and yeah I'm just excited to read this and the wild ride that it probably will be. The next category of books are books that I've been sent by either publishers or gifted by you guys. There are quite a few books here that I've been sent over the last few months and I just feel incredibly lucky to receive them so if you're one of the people that sent me these books then thank you so much. The first I don't actually have physically because I sent to a friend because she was having a hard time and she was really getting into this book when we read it together in Copenhagen and that is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I love this book, I've finished it already. I feel like everybody knows what this is about so I'm not really going to get too much into it but it is an expose on the publishing industry. A white woman steals the unfinished manuscript of her dead friend who is Chinese and the book is all about Chinese involvement in the First World War. So really really messed up and it's kind of about her trying to get away with doing this and her kind of like convincing herself that it was the right thing to do. It is dramatic as you're probably assuming and I can't wait for everyone to read this book when it comes out. In May. Another book that I got sent towards the beginning of the year is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know too much about this book. I think that it's a sci-fi, I think that it's got romance in there and that it's somehow to do with games but I actually heard it compared to The Star of the Sea which is something that I've recently just read. A colleague of mine compared the two and said that they're both some of his favourite books. So yeah I am really excited to read that after loving The Star of the Sea. I'm gonna try and have like minimal expectations going in and that's why I haven't like read too much into this but obviously I know that it's been super hyped it's one of the most hyped releases of last year and I feel so lucky to have been sent this beautiful finished copy as well another lovely hardback that I got sent from Favor and Favor is Brutes by Diz Tate and this is set in Florida and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Virgin Suicides I believe it's about a girl who goes missing in this small town through a darkly beautiful 
footage from brutally compelling lenses take captures the violence, horrors and manic joys of girlhood. Young girls who are completely toxic in this town but it might not be through any fault of their own. And also can we just appreciate this cover because I absolutely love Favour and Favour. They kill it every single time. This is one of my favourite covers ever. Another book that I was sent by a publisher is Bad Crew by Jessica Johns and I actually started reading this one already but I did put it on pause. It is about a young Cree woman uh, living in Canada. So the Cree people are indigenous to Canada and this book mainly revolves around Mackenzie's dreams. She has these really horrific nightmares about her sister's death and her sister did I think die or go missing. She is so terrified by them and she ends up getting followed by all of these crows as well, which is just really creepy, but it is such a unique book. Just talking about this is getting me excited again to read it. So yeah, hopefully you guys will see this one also in my wrap up soon. A bit of a lighter one for our next on the list is the Happy Couple by Nersha Dolan. So this follows actually four characters and I think two of them are getting married, but I don't think anybody actually wants to. So the sections are split into the bride, the bridesmaid, the best man, the groom, the guest and wedding day. I feel like this would be a really, really nice afternoon read. I haven't read any of Nersha Dolan's books before, but this one really grabbed my attention. As you guys can probably tell, I read a lot of like dark twisted books and I just want something like fun and dramatic. Mouth to Mouth by Antoine Wilson is a book that I never thought I'd really be interested in. The main character Jeff notices a man like drowning on a beach and he rescues him, resuscitates him and then leaves before anybody knows that he did it. So the man who was dying has no clue who saved him or like what happened and then Jeff kind of slowly becomes obsessed with the man that he saved and it turned out that he's like some kind of billionaire and Jeff decides that it's a good idea to go and work for him and then the two men get like super close and it starts getting weird. I don't know much more than that but I feel like that's all I really need to tell you guys. I don't know how to explain it but when I heard about this book I just knew that I would really enjoy it. So for my birthday I was lucky enough to receive a couple of books from a couple of my patrons and the first one is Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith and this was actually recommended by my friend Rita. On the back it says two young Vietnamese women go missing decades apart. Both are fearless, both are lost and both will have their revenge. So it's historical fiction and it was long listed for the Women's Prize in 2022 and I really want to read more award-winning fiction and historical fiction to be honest because that is a genre that I am very intimidated by but when I do read it I really enjoy it. So yes, should I read it soon? That is my question. Has anybody else read this book because I feel like I need a little push to actually pick it up. Another book that I was gifted is Kiki's Delivery Service by Aiko Kadono and I read this for a 24-hour readathon and fell in love with it. It is obviously very similar to the movie by Hayao Miyazaki but it does have some differences so it was kind of interesting to read and I honestly just couldn't put it down. Needless to say this was a really really great read and I do recommend if you've ever thought about picking this up. And the latest book that I can say that I can add to my collection is one that I got on Tuesday which was a couple of days ago and that is The Valkyrie by Kate Hartfield. So I actually went to an event on Tuesday and it was the launch of the publishing imprint Magpie who are at Harper Voyager who published this book and this was in a little goodie bag that they were giving out on the evening and it was such an amazing event. I saw so many people there that I knew. I actually have no clue what this book is about. As I said, I just received it in a goodie bag and I haven't looked at it until now. It was a place for believing in gods and monsters, but what made me shiver was that everyone was a god and a monster. I've never read a fantasy North mythology before and I'm actually so excited because it's not necessarily something that I would like reach for at the bookshop. So I feel so grateful that I actually got it in a goodie bag. I hope it's going to be a really good introduction into this specific genre. So at the beginning of this video I did actually promise that I was going to talk a little bit about like why I wasn't on YouTube for a little bit. In recent months my mental health has absolutely plummeted and it's been actually like worryingly bad in the last like month or two just because I've been super stressed about certain things. I guess it's just one of those things as well like I can't really put my finger on it but I was just super unhappy and stressed and anxious all the time and in the last few months I've been quite depressed as well like on and off. I guess I've been depressed the whole time but like it's been a lot worse at certain moments and kind of manageable at other times. But yeah I've just like not been okay. <laughs> and that was like the main reason why I haven't been making videos unfortunately it just didn't make me happy anymore and my whole thing like the entire three years that I've been doing this is if it doesn't make me happy then I need to like not do it and yeah I just thought it would be worth it for like my mental health and like looking after myself to not 
force myself or like put pressure on myself so yeah it's actually been a really nice break and i'm not saying that i'm like coming back in a consistent way but i definitely am planning if i feel in like the mental headspace that i do today to make some more videos in the near future for fun um yeah as a hobby but also i'm kind of anticipating that i'm not gonna have much time to do it anyway because i actually am starting a new job very very soon it is a massive change like quite a big step up and it's going to be full time in central london so yeah not getting into it too much but i will be working in social media for a massively well-known bookish company but yeah i'm really excited quite nervous and this is definitely not a goodbye this is just a new chapter and i feel like this video is the start of that and of course i'll let you guys know exactly how it all goes and i'll hopefully keep you updated with my life in the future vlogs and stuff but yeah i guess that's all i'm gonna say about it for now and the next three books are actually books that i picked up kind of as a congratulations and a well done to myself and just because I'm proud of myself for this kind of big achievement in my life. The first one is Love Marriage by Monica Ali and this book follows the meeting of Joe's mother and Yasmin's side of the family, kind of like the collision of these two worlds and these two young people who are in the middle of this. As the two families are drawn closer together, long-held secrets, lies and betrayals unravel on both sides and Yasmin is forced to ask herself what she really wants in a relationship and what a love marriage actually means. This next one that I got myself is Here Again Now by Okachukwu Nizal and I was actually putting together a post at work for new like exciting paperback releases and this is one of those that I found. The main character is about to get his big break as an actor. I believe that he lives in with his father. He wants to provide for his dad and give him the home ownership that he never had just because he's so grateful to his father and he's kind of repaying him for raising him. Between filming trips the main character reunites with an old friend of his, the one who makes him feel whole but after one magical night a devastating event rips all three men apart. The main theme of this book seems to be about shared grief which is definitely a topic I would like to read more about. The last book that I gifted myself is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Backman. I have Beartown on my shelf, I haven't read it yet but this is another one that I wanted to read this year. It has just been made into a movie with Tom Hanks and I don't know how I feel about that even though I think there was actually a Swedish adaptation of this beforehand. I mean yeah i'm definitely not reading this in anticipation of watching the movie or anything but the actual premise of this book does really intrigue me it sounds kind of sad and like joyful at the same time i don't know how to describe it but it's about an old man who's quite grumpy and then a family move in next door and then i think the daughter of the family kind of forms a friendship with ove i think kind of gets him out of his grumpy old shell to finish off this video i'm going to share the rest of the kind of random books that i've accumulated over the last three months starting with a couple of manga the first one is junji ito's latest manga in the uk at least and that is black paradox was i just holding that upside down the whole time <laughs> here it is this one is about four people who meet in the dark part of the internet who are intent on killing themselves they wander together in search of the perfect death gratefully opening a door that leads them to a rather bizarre destiny so yeah kind of dark obviously but intriguing nonetheless i actually picked this up to give to a friend but they got it themselves before i could send it to them so yeah i didn't actually even mean to pick this up but now that i've got it i decided to keep it anyway because i finished all of my ginger itos on my shelf and i said that i did want to read another one soon so yeah i guess it's going to be this one another one that arrived randomly was the girl from the other side volume four i actually had like all of them up to volume five and this one i ordered back in like the summer or autumn and it only arrived in february which is so so bad but i've got it now and i think i really read it the week that I got it. It is one of my favourite manga series and yes I think this year I will definitely finish all of them. I'm pretty sure there's like 12 or 13. Slowly making my way through. Another book that I ordered in the autumn that actually arrived on my birthday in February is The Gathering Dark. The editor is Tori Bovolino who wrote The Devil Makes Three, a book that I'm reading right now. It's got so many authors including these ones on the back. The Gathering Dark presents some of the most terrifying folkloric tales. I was actually planning on reading this in October because I got it like in advance before then I pre-ordered it. So I don't know when I'm actually going to read this, if I'm going to save it for later this year in the autumn. I feel like that's kind of the thing that I would do. A book that was published at the beginning of this year that I actually have been so much more hyped up about since the night of the event that I told you guys about is God Killer by Hannah Kana, which is another one published by Harper Voyager. It is absolutely beautiful and I believe it's the beginning of a fantasy duology. I missed out on the lovely sprayed edges that literally carried on the design onto these sprayed edges 
but it's okay i got over it so i've started and not finished this one yet but i picked it up in copenhagen and i've talked about it before within that vlog and that is the stolen air by holly black but yeah i was actually really enjoying it at the time it's another one that i just stopped reading i think my attention span is terrible at the moment i got to page 217 so really not bad and i could definitely finish this this week so this is like a companion series this is going to be another duology and it follows one of the younger characters or like two of the younger characters actually in the cruel prince the folk of the air trilogy and yeah it's a really good time actually i feel like there's been criticisms about this but i haven't actually seen any of that and i don't want to because i was really enjoying it just as much as the cruel prince if not more so yeah i'm going to continue reading this soon and i will let you guys know my thoughts a book that i bought and then read the next day in its entirety was mona by polar olic which is actually a pen name for the author this is translated from spanish our latina main character she's a writer and she's been invited to this prestigious award in sweden for writers from all around the world and it's just this really bizarre novella i'm really happy that i read it but it was so dark definitely trigger warnings for trauma like ptsd in terms of like sexual assault and like more i'm not going to talk about it but it was yeah it was very intense and dark but yeah this was a really quirky novella this is the first book that i've ever read that's translated from spanish I really enjoyed it and I would read more from this author definitely. It left a lot for me to think about after I'd read it, like I was kind of unsure of my feelings towards it and I think I gave it a 3.5 stars in the end, I think that was my rating. It was definitely satirical, it had this like bitter humour to it, that's kind of the only way that I could feel to describe it. This was definitely the start of me getting more into novellas as well and definitely inspired me to start writing again along with the next book on this list. So the next book is another one that I actually gave away, I gave it to my mum and that is The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. With that one book she has become one of my new favourite authors, so it's a novella about a mother and off the bat you know that she doesn't live with her daughters anymore, her daughters have moved over to Canada where their father lives. Leda, who is the main character is taking a vacation in the south of Italy and she kind of gets involved in this other family who's vacationing there and it gets really really dark. Leda does these things that you kind of are trying to like shout at her not to do but you kind of understand where she's coming from and why she would do that due to her feelings on motherhood, very complicated feelings. I really enjoyed reading about that theme in depth for the first time. I really enjoyed it, I gave it five stars and I actually ended up picking up two books by Eleanor Ferrante, which are the last two books on this video. Those are My Brilliant Friend, which is book one of the Neapolitan Quartet and it follows these two girls living in Napoli and I think it follows them from when they're children so in this book. I'm pretty sure this is Eleanor Ferrante's like most well-known book and it has been reviewed really well so I decided this would be my next book to read by her but I also did pick up her kind of non-fiction called In the Margins on the pleasures of reading and writing so there's like a few essays within this book about her personal experience with literature and reading and writing it so I actually ended up picking this up because I've just been really inspired like I said to start writing my own stuff and I've recently just started writing a novella of my own and yeah I thought I'd read this to kind of get some advice from one of my new favourite authors. So yeah that is literally the entire book haul. I can't believe I got through that, I can't believe there were like 32 books on this list. I am never going to do a big book haul like this ever again. But yeah I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, if you're going to leave a comment let me know which books I should prioritise from this list, which ones I should read like ASAP, what ones I should read next. It feels so good to be back and talking to you guys. Thank you so much for reaching the end of this video. And yeah, hopefully you'll see me again soon in another one. Bye.